Hey, what's up guys, and welcome to today's jailbreak update video. As you guys probably know by now, yesterday Apple seeded and released iOS 12.1.1 to the general public, and it's available for download with a few new features. But in this video, I wanted to cover not only this, how this impacts the world of jailbreaking, but there have been a slew of new iOS 12 bugs, exploits, vulnerabilities, proof of concept projects that have been released in the last couple of days. There's also a few interesting tidbits in iOS 12.1.1's release notes about potential upcoming exploits for iOS 12. So all this and more in today's video, stay tuned. <laughs> Like I said, this one is going to be a mouthful. We have a lot to talk about in today's video, but if you guys want a quick summary of all the information covered or want to take a look at any of this in more detail, definitely check out our Best Tech Info article. We'd have an entire article dedicated just to this video because so much has been released, announced, and just basically a lot to talk about. So if you guys want a quick summary instead of watching this video, definitely check that out. It's an awesome resource to have. Also give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe if you want to stay updated. All right, well, let's get directly into things. Let's start out with the basics, what you guys might already know. Apple has released iOS 12.1.1 to the public, a few new features in FaceTime, a few new iPhone XR, haptic touch feedback uh, options, basically dual SIM support, live photo capture in FaceTime, and a couple new iPad news features. Nothing too crazy, but where this update comes to shine is with its security notes, and it's right here. I will link this down below in this video's description if you guys want to check out the release notes. But real quickly, I wanted to discuss how this update impacts jailbreaking. Well, when Apple releases a new firmware just like this, a few things happen every single time. Again, let's start off with the basics. First and foremost, if we head to ipsw.me, as you guys will see, now two iOS firmwares are being signed. The latest iOS 12.1.1 that was just released yesterday on the 5th, as well as iOS 12.1. Now, undoubtedly, iOS 12.1 is going to join the list of unsigned IPSW firmwares here very soon. The signing window is going to close for this old iOS version. And uh, let's just state the obvious, definitely do not update to iOS 12.1.1 if you intend on jailbreaking. Now, along with old iOS versions, we can also expect a new iOS 12 beta. I'm guessing either iOS 12.1.2 or iOS was 12.2 to hit beta stages as early as today. I'm really surprised Apple didn't put out a new iOS beta this morning at 10 a.m., but in any case, we could see that later today, if not tomorrow. So like I was getting into a bit earlier in this video, with every iOS release, Apple also releases its security contents and its release notes saying what has been patched, all of its security updates, and bug fixes. Well, this is a really interesting release because iOS 12.1 patches some really interesting things and some major key players such as the Pangu team were actually accredited on this list right here. A few disk image bugs right here, that's not too useful, but what is really interesting is iOS 12.1.1 patches five kernel level vulnerabilities. And like I said, if you guys want to take a look at these notes in further detail, I will have the link down below in this video's description. Anyway, moving on to the most important part, in my opinion, is this kernel level vulnerability. Impact, it says an application may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. But who was it accredited to? Ian Beer of Google's Project Zero. If you guys don't know who he is, he's pretty much the main developer behind both iOS 11 jailbreaks. He is typically known to release his exploits in the past, especially after Apple patches them. Now, Ian hasn't mentioned anything on his Twitter account where he typically informs his followers about his research that he's going to be releasing, but this is what I'm most excited about, honestly, because now that Apple has patched this in iOS 12.1.1, it presumably is unpatched on iOS 12.1 and below, 
Now that it has been patched, however, he can release his research at any point in time to the public. Now, if this exploit is anything like his ones for iOS 11, we have a really good shot at an iOS 12 jailbreak. Again, like I said, this hasn't been released. I just thought this was super interesting that Ian Beer has a kernel level exploit that works on iOS 12.1 and below. And like I said, all this information was found in the security contents of iOS 12.1.1. That's what makes this really such an interesting one. But like I said, not only has iOS 12.1.1 been released to the public, it really isn't that big to update from iOS 12.0 on your 10s Max. Again, I really would not update to this if you intend on jailbreaking, but if you want these new features, you definitely can. Um, in any case, this is some awesome news. We have a new firmware, like I said, a new beta firmware of iOS 12 is going to be coming very shortly. We have some awesome information included in the release notes, but that is not all. There have also been some major updates in the jailbreak scene with new sandbox exploits for iOS 12, as well as a proof of concept project by Pangu. So let's get into that news. This one is really awesome as well. I'm gonna head back into Safari and let's just start with the sandbox exploit. So this security research team right here released a couple of days ago this sandbox exploit. It looks like it works all the way up to iOS 12.0.1. I'm not sure they were reporting on Twitter that it works on iOS 12.1, but in their actual write-up it says affected systems being iOS 12.0.1 and macOS 10.14. In any case, this is a sandbox exploit. Um, it can be useful in a jailbreak. It's not required necessarily. Now, one common misconception is the more exploits we have, the closer we are to an iOS jailbreak, and in this case, an iOS 12 jailbreak. And unfortunately, that's just not true. It is nice to have more exploits to be able to play with and potentially chain together. Sure, I could see that argument, but in reality, all it takes is one very powerful and well-written exploit to achieve TPF0 and get us right on our way to exploiting iOS 12 and creating the jailbreak. And then once we have the actual read and write access on the kernel, a few things still have to be done even after that post-exploitation of the kernel. iOS 12 has not ever received a jailbreak and really no one knows at this point of how long it's going to take once we receive a kernel level exploit. No one knows what the post-exploitation process is going to look like on iOS 12. Honestly, this one could be used for a jailbreak like I've been saying, but a sandbox exploit hasn't been used in a jailbreak since I think iOS was 10.2.1, the Saigon jailbreak, is the last one that used the sandbox exploit, and that has since been updated even then, so I believe. Don't quote me on that. Haven't used Saigon in quite a while, but in any case, this is still really interesting that this is on iOS 12.0.1. If I recall correctly, this might be able to be used to create something like Torngat or Houdini for iOS 12, kind of those half-step jailbreaks where you can get some customization, but you don't have full read and write privileges on the kernel to actually run arbitrary code or unsigned code. Um, in any case, this really started um, some awesome dialogue, I guess, on Twitter. So this was the conversation I was trying to isolate right here. Basically, Ty Lee from the Pangu jailbreak team released his proof of concept, exploit, and slides. Basically, this just shows how to exploit a vulnerability. They didn't actually create an exploit that is powerful enough for a jailbreak. It's just a proof of concept project, but it is very interesting. Saiguza also noted that he found this one previously um, and was basically giving credit to Ty Lee of Pangu. And a few other members on Twitter were wondering if this was possible to be used in a jailbreak, if somebody could actually create an exploit. Saigusa says yes, but you need specific entitlement, basically saying it is possible, but not in its current state. Somebody else has to come around and write the exploit. Granted, that's really great to know that somebody can do that. And a big help is going to be that sandbox exploit chaining these two together to actually create something useful. At least as far as Saiguza, he confirms that this might actually be something to keep in the back of our minds. As far as an iOS 12 a jailbreak goes, if these two guys could actually be useful um, in the jailbreak scene. 
So I just thought that was really awesome news that we've heard from Pangu, not only in the iOS 12.1.1 security release notes, but they're also releasing proof of concept projects on the side that potentially could lead to an iOS 12 jailbreak. Granted, like I said, not in its current state, there is a lot of backend work that would have to be done. Another developer would have to come around and write an exploit based off their vulnerability that they talk about in the presentation. Now, the very last thing I just wanted to mention is the same team that created the sandbox exploit for iOS 12. It looks like they also have a few more vulnerabilities that they're going to disclose once they're patched by Apple. Now, this brings me full circle back to Ian Beer's exploit that was just patched in iOS 12.1.1. Hopefully, we will hear directly from him in the near future about his iOS 12 research. He typically releases his research, and in the past, his exploits have proven very useful for a new iOS jailbreak. So that's what I'm putting my money on. I really can't suggest which firmware to stay on. I would just stay on the lowest possible firmware that you can. Still, if we ever received another kernel level exploit for iOS 11, that one sounds like it'd be pretty much plug and play. As far as iOS 12 goes, there's going to be a lot of steps needed post-exploitation after getting that kernel level exploit until we actually receive a final end user jailbreak utility for iOS 12. And at this stage with no kernel level exploit released, it's next impossible to give an ETA or to recommend a firmware to stay on. I'm staying on iOS 12.0, the initial release of iOS 12. I know a lot of users are staying on iOS 12.0.1. Just as of the past couple of days, we might actually have some exploits coming out for iOS 12.1, but like I said, guys, nothing has been released as of yet that is proven anything useful for an iOS 12 jailbreak. Sure, there's a lot of exploits. Sure, there's a lot of proof of concept projects. There's a lot of stuff going on in the background. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. In any case, guys, that is my video on iOS 12.1.1. Let me know what you guys think down below in this video's description. Again, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you want to recap any of this information, definitely check out our Best Deck Info article. If you appreciate these updates when new iOS firmwares are released, definitely give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to stay updated. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video, but until next time, this is Tony signing out.